So maybe I'm gonna have to go back at it again, sharpen the blades up again. But here are another five piles, six more piles, 17, eight piles tromped. need a better solution okay uh, rebuilding the hay fork um, I wasn't really planning too far ahead to do this so I'm kind of in a hurry because I'm taking off tomorrow um, and I'll be out of town I have this evening to do this build and to pick up the 40 piles of grass so, I uh, have to do this kind of in a hurry. I was going to try to improve on this old prototype that I would made um, a couple seasons ago, but I don't have time for that. So we'll duplicate it. What we need in order to make this work, um, we need 12 um, one by twos that are 48 inches long and then cut them to a, a little bit of a rounded point so we can pick stuff up easier and then we need uh, four pieces that are 16 inches long these are the supports on the side and then we need two pieces that are 52 inches and those cover the width of the um, they cover the width of the bucket that will strap those on and so Two on each side, that's four, and then eight forks across the middle. Don't look at the mess. And we'll um, we'll build, we'll just rebuild this, reconstruct this same um, setup. I know it works. Um, it's a little wobbly, but when you strap it down, it's good. So, since we were in a pinch, I don't have the right materials. But what I did find are some two by threes and those two by threes will be approximately the same width see there um, so we'll rip these down the side and they're eight feet long so we'll whack them off in the middle and that'll give us our four foot pieces and then I found a couple of uh, one by three that um, I, I think they were framing for, um, a quick and dirty whiteboard, um, at one point utilizing a piece of, um, bathroom paneling, uh, but, uh, which is a pretty quick and easy project for that. So, um, going to rip these down, cut them, uh, I'm going to cut them to length rip those down and then we'll cut these to length and uh, we'll just put the sucker together real fast strap it on and pick up some grass got it mm -hmm. all right so we'll measure this out to length we need 48 inches i'm going to measure it real quick from both sides just to be sure that we get the right length we need 48 inches on that, and then we'll need 52 inches on here. Twice. And we need some 
16 inch pieces and they don't have to be precise so just mark those out and Uh, not gonna have enough so we'll just borrow a piece from the other one it's fine ready alright let's start out get this dude out of the way Probably only needed two of those, didn't I? Oh well. Now we're gonna rip it. All right, well, I lost my camera crew, but here's the um, 12 pieces of ripped down. We'll turn that into our slats for that. You didn't want to see all that exciting table saw action anyway. Okay, so we are coming in about three quarters from each side and then about three inches down um, from the end and connecting the dots and we'll make a nice little point. It'll be kind of a blunt point. So this is just rough. It's not a big deal. Um, there's no precision here. It's just going to stick in the ground and underneath the grass and get all messed up anyway. So we'll cut those and we'll see what they look like. Okay, so 52 divided by eight is about six and a half. Well, it's exactly six and a half. So I'm gonna create a six and a half inch piece of scrap and I'm gonna use that as a quick and dirty spacer. Back in a second. All right, well, that's a two-handed operation. So let's um, mark these approximately every six and a half. This does not have to be precise. It's not rocket science. We basically just need to get these on here. So, see, it doesn't work out. So if we come back from the other side, I suppose we could split the difference. That would be exciting. If I thought ahead, I could have cut it at like six and a half minus half of a three quarter, which would be what a quarter and an eight three eighths. Maybe what six and a eighth or something crazy like that. And there we go. So we'll lay the first ones down, and this will give us an interesting separation ish again it's not rocket science once you get that 
on one of your pieces, then transfer those markings over to your other support piece. Again, this was not uh, my intended rebuild of this device. This was a reproduction of my prototype. So um, we'll do a better video with the precision and um, and some uh, and some better materials at some point for the side pieces um, we will use the, the same approximate spacings and then we'll attach the unit together down here at the bottom um, but these are just mainly to hold the grass on the sides um, that's really about it so we'll have one have one piece sitting across this way and pointing towards the front or something and another piece here um, and this one I didn't need to put that one in there um, so that's mainly just to hold stuff onto the side and if I don't like that I don't like that let's move it down so let's go Let's come down about the width of that and then what's six and a half what do we look like there and then we'll have another section here all right so we'll have one piece up here and one piece right here. yeah I like that that's good let's go for that this is uh, rapid prototyping And then we'll just attach to the base down here. This is the weakest part right here. Attaching this to the sides. Um, the materials just aren't thick enough to be able to um, make that a worthy connection. Um, and if I find some angle bracket or something around here, I'll put that on there. Okay, we just screw it all together. Here's the... Uh, is the first side. Oh, sweet. Just uh, use some inch and a quarter screws. Just stick it together. I know they're gonna rust. They're gonna come out. Who cares? Okay, we're putting together the bottom um, of the fork and. I started over here just to kind of get things sort of straightish. Um, laid one of the forks down, put a screw into the tabletop, use this as a straight edge, come over to the other end, put another one on, uh, put a single screw in and a single screw in on this side. That gives the ability to kind of twist things around and, and straighten them up. And then up on the front piece, we'll put on one screw, and we put in another screw, and then that gets the whole thing straight. And then we go back in and add the extra screws to kind of keep it from racking. Um, and then same process, just from, well, from there, we just roughly line up on our desired center mark, front and back, just drive in a couple of screws, and we do that all the way across until we're done. All right math error um if you divide 52 by 8 you get six and a half um and that works out right except you have an extra one you have an extra one on the end um so when you divide by eight you're going to end up with nine pieces i should have divided by seven um, and that would have come out okay, but, uh, all is not lost. Um, we need, so we'll do nine forks across the bottom and I'll go rob one of the pieces from the earlier prototype. Okay. Here are the connections to the side and you can see why this is the weak point. 
The only thing that really keeps it um, workable is that this is all strapped onto the bucket. So uh, we'll move it outside, hook up the bucket, and get some grass. Okay, so there's a good view. And the tractor bucket, the front loader bucket, will just sit right down inside there. And we'll run a ratchet strap around this way. And then we'll come through this way with another set of straps. All right, there we go. Strapped on, well, actually, this one was a little dry rotted and I broke it. So I just tied it on. That strap mainly is to kind of hold the sides up so they don't bow out. And these ratchet straps here are essentially holding the, the hay fork onto the bucket. So, if we get down underneath here, you can see that the front edge of the, well, let me focus it here, the front edge of the bucket sits on one cross member, and then the back edge of the bucket sits on the back of that, uh, the other member. So that keeps it, that keeps it stable front to back. Um, do we need to have the stuff sticking out in the back? Hmm, probably not. Um, I originally put the rear cross member all the way to the back edge of those on the, <clears throat> the original prototype and then I moved it forward when I saw that it was rock the bucket was rocking a little bit so um, I didn't feel like taking the time to recalculate any of that stuff so I just left it as it was now we go out here and collect some grass Okay, I readjusted the straps because these are too short. I couldn't find my longer straps in a hurry, but I'll find those later. But uh, I had them attached here, and as the bucket rotated, the straps would loosen and tighten because this distance didn't stay the same as we rotated the bucket around. So I had a little more trouble picking up. That was the reason why I had trouble picking up the grass um, out there. I was hearing some crackling with the the lumber um, so now I have them anchored on the bucket nice and tight um, and uh, they'll stay as I rotate the bucket around now we're cooking we got a load now a bigger ride up
Okay, so the light's going out uh, here pretty quick, um, just to get some perspective. This is about half of uh, the yard collected up, and the tractor ought to give you a pretty good idea. Um, uh, my pile's probably five and a half feet high. It comes all the way back here. We're looking at um, oh, three, six, nine, twelve, fourteen, maybe fourteen feet in diameter at this point, plus spillage out here. I'm um, at about five and a half feet high. Working towards um, <clears throat> about 40 times 25, which uh, cubic feet, uh, and um, so about halfway there. And if there's enough light, I'll try and catch the pile, because if I leave it here overnight or the next day, it's going to uh, compress a little bit. So. Uh, I'll be back. All right. Here's the last of the pile. There, I got some scraps and some chunks that fell off. That um, while we we're driving back from the yard, but not too bad. Overall, this has got to be. 99% of it so that is just one mowing um, and probably about two weeks of growing and uh, that'll keep happening and eventually all of that plus all the others in the season turns into that so down it goes and uh, that's the hay fork. <laughs>